Crecí en el departamento de Morazán, un área rural del municipio de Sociedad, rodeado de montañas, eh, ríos, eh, diferentes colores, pintorescos. La mayoría de jóvenes crecen en El Salvador, no hay oportunidades. Sí hay trabajo, pero es un trabajo de campesino, agricultura. Y yo quería ver qué podía hacer por la sociedad, qué oficio aprender. Cuando cumplí mis 17 años, decidí eh, emigrar a Estados Unidos. Me pusieron en un centro de detención por tres días, sin mucha comida, el ambiente es muy frío. Y después de eso me enviaron a un centro de detención juvenil. Estuve ahí por un mes y medio. No sabía si era de día o era de noche, pero yo usé ese, esa experiencia negativa para tornarla en algo positivo y me motivó a seguir luchando, a, a buscar oportunidades para ver cómo yo podía demostrar que no soy una persona mala como ellos me hicieron sentir. Bueno, a través de Montgomery College yo aprendí que hay muchas personas que están ayudando a mi país. Yo quisiera de alguna manera contribuir y a lo mejor evitar que los jóvenes pasen por una travesía de inmigración, morir en el camino, porque es una decisión muy difícil de tomar. Miss Evelyn, uh... Thank you very much for all the support that you have given me these four years. And as you know, my heart is with my people back home. How is Montgomery County connected to El Salvador? What connects Montgomery County to El Salvador is people, people like you and me who have come to this place and have made this our home. El Salvadorans living here in the county are the largest immigrant population. How has the city started and what role it plays to the connection with uh, Montgomery County and El Salvador. Right, well, former County Executive Ike Leggett uh, wanted to make Montgomery County one of the world's most welcoming and diverse communities. And he knew we would become more culturally competent by working with the sister city community. So Evelyn and the Granados brothers and, and Neftali Benitez and others stepped up and became our first sister city in July of 2011 when County Executive Leggett went to Morrison and signed the agreement with the governor. We are a community that is organized. We have hometown associations, we have nonprofits. The people in Morazan are organized because of the history of the Civil War where they had to survive. You know, there were many reasons why we chose Morazan. Uh, what are some of the things that you at uh, Sister City have done in Morazan? The most important thing is uh, the connection between Montgomery College and Morazan. Uh, through the sister cities, we were able to have an exchange of professors and administrators. They were able to forge a partnership with the University of El Salvador, where they are going to be doing these exchanges and working on initiatives. They will also be assisting the new campus that the University of El Salvador has in Morazan. The education program that Evelyn and others led really was the premier project over the years. But also uh, Habitat for Humanity, they had 90 volunteers go there over 15 trips over four years. They built 26 houses, they fixed another 24 or five in El Barrial. That was extraordinary. Former County Council Member George Leventhal raised $11,000 and got all kinds of medical equipment donated by local hospitals for the hospital in Morrison. We gave computers, sports equipment. The Salvadoran committee has been the number one committee in our, our, of our five sister cities. It's been the model for the others to follow. Seeing the individual people from the county going there and falling in love with, the, with Morazan and El Salvador has been very meaningful to me. Comenzó en 2010 con el primer viaje de Sister Cities. I was um, the head of a organization, a nonprofit in Montgomery County called Mover Moms, and we were looking for a place to do a volunteer project. And we were thinking Costa Rica. Thanks to Sister Cities, I decided that El Salvador would be a better place for us. Primarily, we focused on the school Amunchea, which is in Perkin. Each time we've gone, we've collected different school supplies and we've come up with different games like math games or things like Sudoku. 
Twister, different. We've done a lot of trivia where we try to teach English in a fun way. Even though there were cultural differences or language differences, just when you bring groups of kids together from any country, they, they immediately have bonds. They play soccer or they laugh together. We enrich so many people. We brought about you know, 25 or 30 people to El Salvador who probably otherwise wouldn't have gone there. When I come back to the U.S., I, some, I feel like I bring a part of El Salvador with me. I think about it a lot. We go to Salvadoran festivals here. I think it's taught me about serious immigration problems here in the U.S., and I feel like El Salvador is a second home to me. This was our very first trip with our grant. What have you learned from these trips to El Salvador? We wanted to um, bring El Salvador into our curriculum. And so we knew that you don't just get that knowledge in the library, you really have to experience it. What we wanted was to have a conversation with the professors there about how they teach global issues, how we are all interconnected. What does that look like in their classrooms? And we wanted to learn from that to inform our own teaching at Montgomery College. We learned very quickly and very early on that the level of commitment to higher education in El Salvador is enormous and, and extremely important to the well-being of the country, of the nation. History is kept in the university, and the connection between the university and culture and society is much, much more intense than what we experience here. We learned about how much we don't know. Uh, about ourselves, about our American history and American politics, um, and our role in the world. In El Salvador, professors know global studies very, very well, and we had a lot to learn from them. Um, they had a global perspective that we were just developing. So we came back knowing, we came back to the United States knowing, before we go again to El Salvador to, to develop this partnership, we have to study a great deal. And so we had faculty seminars where we started reading uh, about liberation theology, and we started reading about what it means to teach in an oppressed nation. So Pedagogy of the Oppressed became a very important text for us. We became students and we were happy to be learning, um, stimulated by the environment in El Salvador. Jorge, cuénteme, ¿qué se ha logrado con este hermanamiento entre Montgomery County y Morazán? Sí, Rafael, con mucho gusto. Yo soy originario de Morazán y he ido a Morazán cinco veces en delegaciones del hermanamiento de Montgomery County con Morazán. Y hemos logrado muchas cosas. Hemos hecho algo muy especial que ha sido el cabildeo para que pudiéramos tener lo que es la, la sede universitaria de San Francisco Gotera Morazán. Al tener una sede educativa en Morazán, hay un futuro para nuestra gente que pueda ir a, su, a la universidad, educarse, quedarse ahí y hacer su vida en su departamento. Y eso es un, sería algo muy bonito. Creo que el unirse a proyectos como el Sister City sería una gran manera de apoyar a nuestro país para poder aportarle a, a nuestra gente que está allá y de esa manera no tendrían que tener una emigración forzada. Eh, a través de los años, yo tengo más de 40 años de vivir en este país y he visitado, tengo cuatro hijos graduados de las universidades y eso, el visitar las universidades y ver que las universidades se desarrollan, se hacen muy uh, amplias y con condiciones muy buenas es debido a gente altruista que da sus fondos y que apoya este tipo de esfuerzos y yo creo que hacerlo como nosotros como diáspora en, en Morazán sería algo muy especial y eso es lo que a mí me motiva para poder pensar en que esto es posible Dios de alguna manera nos ha proveído quizás más de lo que merecemos y es una manera de dar gracias a Dios aportando a la gente que lo necesita y dejar un legado a nuestras generaciones. Al final del día lo que queremos es que nuestra gente se sienta bien en su lugar, pueda trabajar, pueda estudiar y pueda hacer su vida en su país y en su tierra. Me alegra muchísimo el proyecto que tienen de poner una sede de la Universidad de El Salvador en Moazán. Y yo sé que hay muchos jóvenes deseando tener oportunidades, deseando tener eh, acceso a la educación. ¿Cuánto daría por tener las oportunidades que hay aquí en mi país? No tendría que andar en otro país. 